Hello, thanks for joining us today. The video that you're about to watch is to be used for instructional purposes only. If you need more detailed information, please consult your owner's manual or you can contact the Wanner Engineering Customer Service Department. I hope you find this video helpful and it gets you back up and running in a timely fashion. Thank you. Hi, my name is Neil Taylor. I work at Warner Engineering and I'm here today to show you how to replace the check valves in our new MT8 metering pump. So the tools that you'll need for this are a 10 millimeter socket wrench and some sort of a pick or some sort of a small screwdriver in order to get out any O-rings that may be stuck down in the ports. So first things first, you'll use your 10 millimeter wrench to loosen the eight bolts in the top portion of the manifold. Now I've pre-loosened these just to aid um, in the, the speed of this. Normally these would be torqued per your instruction manual. Um, so make sure that when you reassemble this that you torque these bolts properly and that is spelled out in your instruction manual that came with your new MT8 metering pump. So there are eight bolts, they're stainless steel bolts, um, and when you remove the top portion of the manifold, that will expose the inner workings. There will be two O-rings, a crush ring, and the check valve itself, and uh, they're very easily accessible, which I will show you. So you remove the eight bolts, and when you remove the top portion of the manifold, Everything is exposed. You can see your check valve, which is shown here, and also the white crush rings, which are in the upper portion of this particular portion of the manifold. So how do we get at these? Well, very simply, the check valves just come right out. There's no use for, there's no need for a tool. There's no need for special instructions to take them out. They should just pop right out and there is the check valve and the encapsulated o-ring so you remove these pieces and now you'll need your pick tool because down inside of, of here is a white o-ring and they just pop right out as you can see so with a screwdriver or any kind of a pick those those o-rings will just come right out. Now in the top portion of the manifold you will also see our white crush rings. You will need to remove those. Those cannot be reused. So that's good. That's an important thing to note. Please do not reuse these. They're a one-time use and they come out just as easily as the o-rings. They come right out with your pick tool or a small screwdriver. So you've got everything disassembled, everything is clean, everything looks normal, and you're ready to reassemble. Now when you reassemble this, it's critical to do this in the particular order which I'll show you. So the four components that you need are laid out in the front here. Here are your check valve assemblies. Here are your encapsulated O-rings. Here are your PTFE O-rings and your crush rings. So first things first, you want to grab your PTFE O-ring and install those into each one of the top ports. Now they won't install all the way down to the bottom necessarily and that's okay. Just make sure that they are down inside of the port and not sitting on top of the manifold. And you can do that very easily just with the pressure of your finger. Very easy to install. The next thing that you do is you grab one of your new check valve cartridges, which come pre-assembled in your kit, set it into the opening and press down. That's it. 
very easy, and they seat themselves. You do that for all three of the check valves. Just like that in your set. The next step, another critical step, is to make sure that your PTFE encapsulated O-rings are installed around each one of the check valves. Don't just set them on top of the check valve. Make sure that they are at least around the diameter of each one of the check valves. The next thing to do is to take one of your crush rings, and when you install these, what they're gonna wanna do is, you can put this in there, but the minute that you turn it over, they could fall out. So, a little helpful trick is just a little dab of grease on each one of the crush rings. When you put those then into their home, they don't fall out. Very, very easy to assemble that way. And it doesn't take much grease, just a little dab, just enough to, to hold them up against the top surface of the manifold. As you saw, I had just a very tiny amount on my fingers, and that was more than enough to, to hold those in place. And you're ready to put the top cover back on. You line everything up, and it just falls right into place. Everything is set, everything looks good. You notice that you have a bit of a gap here. That's because you haven't compressed the O-rings yet. That's very normal and natural to have a gap between the main piece of the manifold and the top part of the manifold. All there is left to do is to reinstall your eight bolts and torque them per what your instruction manual says and your pump is back up and running and you've replaced the top check valves in your manifold. Now in the bottom, there's also the same check valves, but it's a little bit different assembly procedure, so let me show you that. So taking out the bottom bolts is a little bit more difficult because you can't see them, but there is room to get them out. As you can see, the bolts can just, they'll just drop out, so any kind of a right angled socket or any kind of a box end wrench that's 10 millimeter will get these bolts out. And I have to show you this because this does assemble a little bit differently than the top portion of the manifold. Um, so there's a different order in which, to, in which to do things. And if the order isn't done properly, your pump won't function properly. There's a potential that you could have leaks. There's also a potential that you'll get no fluid flow at all. So it's critical to make sure that when you're changing out your check valves, that you are actually following the correct order and the correct direction that everything is supposed to be assembled in. All right. Once you remove the eight bolts from the bottom portion of the manifold, that manifold will just drop right out. Exposing again the three check valves and your O-rings. Now, something to note. If you take a look at how these check valves are oriented, they're oriented a little bit differently than the top ones. It's critical that they're reassembled properly. So we're going to remove these check valves like we did before. All three just pop right out. You've got your O-rings, which are exposed, which can just pop right out again using your pick tool. They come out very, very easily. Here is the part that you need to pay special attention to. Your crush rings are still up inside of the manifold. So you've got to be able to get those out. And if your pump is in some sort of a skid system or anchored down to, a, to the floor, that could be difficult. That's why it's important for you to have this pick tool or a screwdriver or something to get up inside of there to pull those crush rings out because they're crushed and stuck up inside. And like we talked about, you cannot reuse those.
They must be um, brand new and they, they come in your kit. So just make sure that you get those out. So you find where the opening is. You get your pick tool up in there and you kind of feel your way through and you can pull those crush rings out. The, the second one was a little bit sticky so I had to use the pick tool. It took me just a, just a minute to get it out but once you get the crush ring out it comes out just like the other ones. So crush ring is out. You do that for all three ports. Again, grease on your crush ring. You, you can just stick it right to the top of the underside of this manifold and it will stay there. You reinstall your three new check valve cartridges. Put your O-rings on just like you did in the top. Put everything back together. Put your bolts in. Torque them per your instruction manual and you've changed all six check valves in your MT8 pump. Thank you.